you may all think at the end of all of this that we all carefully coordinated the presentations to harp on common themes, but I assure you that we haven't. Um, but uh, many of us that have participated on this game for, for many, many years know that there are a lot of recurring themes in what makes a mission successful or not. I will tell the principal investigators in the room, first and foremost, congratulations. I, I hope you recognize that you are in privileged company uh, and that NASA is certainly very fortunate to have people like you around. Whether you are a, a very experienced, moderately experienced, or, or low experienced PI, um, please remember the following. This is a very difficult and unforgiving business we are in. And the tough part about it is that once you let go of your baby, uh, you let go of it. And a million other things, since we live in a very imperfect environment with people that make mistakes and bureaucracies that are not necessarily all designed to help you get from A to B, it is a heck of a challenge. Now, even the simplest things, like the other day, I, you know, I've been following up um, the, the, I don't know if you, any of you would care, but the metro system in Washington has over 200 plus miles of track laid out, and they've been doing this over and over and over for years, and they now decided to extend it to Dulles Airport, which I applaud because I've been, been stuck in traffic so many times that it's incredible. But you may think that the systems engineers that do that job and project managers and however scientists and what have you that might participate know this better than they know themselves. Well, guess what? 40% into the development time, they've consumed 80% of the research. So, you know, guess what? I mean, something that someone does day in and day out cannot be designed to the level of prediction that we are all trying to pretend we know when you start on a mission. So up to, I don't mean to lecture you, but i got to tell you, up to this point, you have been living in a paper world. You poured your soul into a winning proposal, and I applaud you. But once you are selected, this is the, oh crap, I've been selected time. When you say, how am I going to do this with the team of people I have and to the expectations that we all have? Now, I know many of you in the audience um, have worked very closely with many of the principal investigators here, uh, so I know I can get away with some comments that may appear that I'm attacking the PI, but I'm really not. I mean, I really want to talk about the team and the, the effort. So let's see if I can figure out. So if, with your permission, by the way, I will stay behind the podium because I was operated on recently and I need to have something to hang on to, or I'm advised to anyway to do that. Uh, let's see, am I hitting the right? Ah, there you go. So th this is, by the way, and I was part and parcel to creating many of this as part of the agency when I was still with NASA. Creating all of these definitions for systems engineering, um, and uh, all you know, I have, have, I have highlighted in red some of the most important things uh, that are important to remember. A lot of commonality behind them. Not that you need to memorize any of them, but this is what you would find in textbooks about systems engineering. So the good news is someone went through the trouble of capturing it and be able to communicate it. The bad news is that this doesn't reflect experience, and this doesn't quite get to all the intricacies of successful systems engineering. Um, so here is where I'd like to start. Uh, systems engineering begins with a core group of people that up front have to decide how they're going to work together. Do not, you know, by, by the way, pay attention to what circle is on top or on the side or what have you. It's not intended to create a hierarchy but to communicate a point. See, in all the definitions, we fail to recognize that it, the decisions cannot just fall upon a technical expert i.e. the systems engineer. This is a team effort, a negotiation effort. This is a give and take that is a 24-7 job. Being a principal investigator, being successful on a NASA mission, it is not a part-time job. It is not. The most successful teams, you know, you will see that the investigator team and this group of people are just day in and day out working their, their souls to succeed. Now, one of the problems is that there are cultural built-in inefficiencies that people need to respect, recognize, and use it to their advantage. For example, you know, the scientists, 
You are trained to be you know, a free thinker, live your life in question, and be the first. That's why your science was selected. On the other hand, you have an engineer, and I, you know, notice that I use the term engineer as opposed to systems engineer, and it is because I believe that every engineer needs to think as a systems engineer. You just happen to have the experience to take greater and greater responsibility, and that is really the only difference between being the lead systems engineer or being an engineer at a lower level of system. But the engineer is trained to be process-driven, organization, bring, bringing things to closure. That's what we are taught in school. So you have a, you know, a, a, a tension that hopefully you can make it healthy and use it to your advantage to challenge each other and arrive at decisions. And then you have the manager who in the NASA culture tends to be normally also someone from an engineering background. Right? So they also have that tendency, but it's just trying now to balance the forces of the scientific needs and how are we going to implement this um, in the best way we know how. Now, the systems engineer is responsible for the end-to-end -end design and technical integrity of the system so that uh, the job can get done. And this is something that they can do, cannot do alone. Now, I want to highlight the quote at the top. I, I actually urge you to write it and not forget it. There is, I, I got to tell you, you look at your teams and you're going to look around and say, I have some of the, most, the smartest people on earth working with me on this. Well, one of the things you got to keep in mind is that when you have a lot of smart people that don't have enough to do, they will figure it out <laughs> and will make it up. And so, you know, you got to be conscientious about how am I, how am I going to work together as a team? How are we going to get this done? And when do I add the right people at the right time so we could be frugal and we could be efficient in the process? One of the recommendations I always made to the small explorers later on when I managed the explorer program was, you know, that one of the first things you do when you are selected, go off on a retreat. Go up your sleeves and start thinking about how we're going to work together, what policies we're going to follow, what kinds of decisions we're going to have to make at one point to be successful. Okay. Well, you may need to help me here. All right. So a systems engineer you know, is constantly, and it's a recursive analysis, design, and verification process. So anything you look at, if you're starting to envision your observatory already in orbit, making a measurement, probing to get the measurements you're looking for, being uh, knowledgeable of the environment you're in, whether it is internal to your observatory or outside of the observatory, and the data that you're either requesting or sending to someone else to do something with it, and especially being very knowledgeable of the boundary conditions and interfaces and constraints you've got to live by. So the systems engineer is going to lead and manage the process for the technical decisions through analysis and verification. It's something that needs to start and be repeated very early. Uh, you codify the decisions in the form of requirements. Once the supporting data is available to you for you to make those requirements. So here is where the tension between engineers and scientists normally begins, right? Some people may be tempted to say, give me the requirements, leave me alone, I know, be know best. Well, guess what? It is a process of design, analyze a little, test a little, and then move on. And you start penciling in and flowing down requirements, but codifying them once you have enough data to do so. People that actually short circuit that process end up paying a big price normally at the end when things that are not, well, that are orphan, as I say, or not properly verified early enough come back to bite them. And they tend to be the, the more time, and I'll show a chart later, uh, the more you wait, the more difficult it becomes to recover from those. Uh, mistakes. So requirements are flowed down but verify on the way up. Analyze, flow down, come back up. You now you went from penciling in to inking them in and move forward. And then checks and balances are an essential part of a process. Now so you have uh, the people, the tools, the facilities to do the job at hand. 
terms of policies, processes, and procedures you got to live by, and checks and balances that you have to build into the system. Now, I, I must tell you, those of um, when we worked on the Explorers together, I know Jim Birch is in the back, and you know, Image, one of the first missions on the Midex class. The policies, the checks and balances at the time were totally different from the environment we're in today. We have freedoms that today we do not have. We do not have uh, Congress breathing after our backs for every move we made or you know, the bureaucracy of uh, a lot of the agency falling upon you at the time. Uh, nevertheless, there is a way to upfront come to an agreement with the organization that is helping you build this to try to make this as efficient as you possibly can. And one of the things people look for is visibility. So you know, once you start now breaking down your system and flowing all the pieces you need to be successful and come to that agreement up front and view it as a capability, uh, expose that and communicate that information frequently so that uh, people believe in what you're doing and know that you're paying attention to it. So the way I view it is you start with the principal investigator, the project manager, and the systems, lead systems engineer, the team of people that I mentioned up front that are now responsible for, uh, to make this happen. And this is typical, you know, not to be uh, fully comprehensive, but just to show some of the key uh, personnel that you would have on the team. And I, on the next chart, added when I start with a list of what are the key um, technical areas of expertise that I start with so that I have the core of people that are needed to close the loop on uh, the technical questions that I need to answer up front. Uh, this is what I have highlighted in red. There is one item that I want to call your attention to and that's electronics, electronic parts. We had an earlier discussion about reliability and I gotta tell you that's where it begins. You select good parts for your application, and you know that is what you how you build in uh, reliability. If I showed you any of you that have talked about uh, single string designs, you know that when you do the calculations for probability of success, you're not going to end up with a good number that anyone would accept. But what you do is that if you put a lot of faith on the parts you select and how actually you test and analyze moving forward is how you build that uh, assurance uh, that your system is going to work. So you focus on the early phases of the design on being a technical architect. Requirements and decision codification, the architecture of the design, all the preliminary uh, data that you're going to need to be successful moving forward and including operations concepts. Now you make a decision and start moving into implementing it. Cutting hardware and um, actually start assembling, fabricating, assembling, and integrating the system. And I want to also call your attention here to the systems engineering experience. So when you start building your team, trusting and recognizing that you need, as a lead systems engineer, someone with experience is key. Just like NASA has entrusted in a PI that has experience in how to do this kind of work, you as an investigator need to look at what is the experience of my lead systems engineer, what is the experience of my project manager, so that we can properly do this job and manage what is a significant investment and a significant expectation to deliver on the science that you promised. Actually, I should have called this chart to V or not to V. You may have seen earlier versions of the V versus this process. To tell you the truth, if you look into uh, the distinction between them, they all talk about the same thing. The one thing that I want to highlight here is that what was not properly reflected on the V is that it is a recursive process. You cannot assume that you're just going to go through the process once, get mm -hmm. the PDR, and then everything would be great. I mean, systems engineering is just like, as I mentioned on the science side, 24-7 uh, endeavor. And you're all very familiar with the life cycle process and what is required uh, to get to every one of uh, the gates. By the way, there was a time in the small explorers and mid-ex where we could combine many of these reviews and gates. We felt very confident in how we could do it and provided the visibility to do that. That flexibility has been taken away in the present policy environment and one that I, I hope NASA can get to revisit for certain classes of missions. So now that I'm outside the agency, I can critique it. You know, when I was inside, I had to live by it. Now, here's the most important point on this chart. 
by the time you get to PDR, you have made 95% of the decisions that will consume your cost. And uh, do not fool yourselves into thinking that it's any different. It is the same a great chart. every time. And also, uh, yeah. purposely, I have shown that the cost uncertainty, since you have up to this point have been living largely on a paper world, the uncertainty on cost is pretty high. So the message I can give to all of us is let's not pretend that we know more than we actually do and do the homework as soon as we possibly can in the life cycle to start answering the technical questions so that we can be successful. Recognizing that once you make a decision to proceed, you're in. And the idea that you can discover, this is my personal view, actually this one says three and you're giving me two more, so I'm delighted. Ben, <laughs> the idea that I can continue to discope past PDR once we are all rolling into cutting hardware and actually somehow balance the, the budget, it is a fallacy. There may be some room you know, for some adjustments, but the truth is that if you have not made, made the tough decisions by the time you get to PDR, beyond that it is exceedingly difficult and more often than not actually results in cost growth. So please do keep that in mind. Now, since I, you know, most of my life, you guys know, I either was at headquarters or at NASA Goddard, I thought I would give credit to systems engineers that I admire at other NASA centers. So in this case, Gentry Lee, a good friend of mine, and, and you know, these are philosophies that he lives by and, one, and, not, and philosophies that I believe in. Challenge technical inputs and claims. Good, bad news or what have you. Challenge what you're being uh, told, and you ask what if, what if, what if all the time. Analyze and get to know your system. So the systems engineer is actually feeling as you learn and make decisions, you have this little jar where you're, you're storing radioactive fluorescent pills. <laughs> so every time someone asks something, you take this pill and take it, and you watch the fluorescent radioactive material go through your veins and see where it ends. And watch it for us, because that's what a systems engineer at whatever level is supposed to be doing. If you change something here, what does it mean all the way down to the lowest denominator in my system? Get to the bottom of anomalies, especially those in highly critical areas where the FMEAs are telling you, you, you better pay close, close attention to these things and do not ever ignore them, because that's where the risks are hidden. Minimize the known unknowns and look for experts to help you do that. I'm not talking about a very bureaucratic, a whole bunch of people thing. Peer reviews are very effective when you bring an expert and say, take a second look at this and tell me what you think, what you see in trends, what you see in data that can actually reveal things we haven't thought about. And you know, someone mentioned earlier, I mean, I, I remember, and I know John Mather will share these experiences when he would show up in the morning during COVID and say, you know, last night I was thinking about this or that, and sure enough, and he was just dreaming about something. Sure enough, we went back down and said, let me bring another expert to say, take a second look. It was not a bureaucratic, let's bring a whole bunch of people to analyze or review, but someone, he said, come and take a second look at this. And you know, more often than not, you will reveal something that no one thought about. And walking around with a um, critical ear, now, li lastly, and I'm out of time, I, I think diary of a systems engineer. This is what systems engineers walk around doing all the time. Do I have the right requirements? Am I discerning between desires and requirements? Am I trusting your team today? Do we have clear roles and responsibilities? Is there in anyone outside actually of the bounds of what we think we're doing? Do you requirements have decisions? Is my plan credible today as it was yesterday? Do I have checks and balances, monitor progress, uh, treat resources, all of these as budget? Because they are. That's what they translate to. Test as you fly and fly as you test. And celebrate early wins and acknowledge your team for the accomplishments one step at a time. Thank you.